Uh, so hello again from Kilhome Distillery for our fourth uh, live broadcast. I'm joined again by James, uh, my son, and uh, this uh, week, this Friday, uh, we've sent out 200 tasting packs, uh, which consist of our limited releases for 2020. Uh, so our 100% Isla, which will be released in September, the 10th edition, uh, Fino Cast Matured, which will also be released in September, and then Loch Gorm, uh, which has been released uh, earlier uh, this week um, and uh, is being sent around the world now uh, and is uh, mainly online, uh, as you can imagine. And then our, our fourth one that we'll taste this evening is from uh, a cast that we're vatting in the next week or so, uh, from, uh, and we're calling this Amburg. Uh, again, this is a, a something that was a mistake at the beginning uh, when uh, two vats uh, mistakenly were joined together when a valve was uh, mistakenly open and left overnight and uh, Mackie Bay in one vat at 46% and port cast matured at 50% uh, got joined together and uh, we took them out uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that when we, we come to taste that. I should say so there's been a lot of questions about the tasting packs and it's great because there's been uh, lots of interested people uh, wanting to know whether we're going to do it again and, and things like that we ran out of bottles so um we've been waiting for for more of the of the little bottles to arrive they have now arrived um and we should have another pack available online sometime this week um and that would be sort of sold i guess you know in the next week 10 days and then we would do the tasting on the 24th so um the best thing to do is, is keep an eye on our on our social media and um the packs have been selling quite quickly, but we've done, I think, three times as many packs as for this one. So um, there should hopefully be plenty. Yeah, I mean, I think this works really well because it uh, means that those who've, who've got the packs uh, this week and, and join in the tasting with us. Uh, and it's a little bit more fun than just li listening to a virtual tasting done by people at the distillery. So I think it gives everyone who's got the pack. And unfortunately, I know that a number of you won't have one. Uh, but hopefully uh, in a few weeks there, there'll be a lot more available. And we're going to continue to do this as we believe it's a great way of engaging uh, with our fan base and, and customers from around the world. Uh, and it's really the only way we can do it at the moment. And I think uh, it's proving very successful. I actually forgot one as well. We've got the, the new make oh, sanitizer yeah. as well. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, slight... Uh, Slip up by the sales marketing team. Um, <laughs> Do you want a glass as well? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm all no right. you remember. I'm all right. So the um, the new make, the new spirit sanitizer was something that we actually used at the distillery before. It's gone quite dark, is that? No, that's fine. Okay. I turned the all screen right. down. Um, no, you worry about technical things. Uh, so this is something that we actually had available at the distillery when we were still all here working, and we use it to sanitize our hands. Uh, and actually. It's very nice, actually, and, and it's also very nice to have a, a slurp of, especially in these difficult times. Um, but also local um, people around Isla also asked for us to provide it, so we did, and, and we've sent some out to our, our customers in the UK and actually further afield. Uh, and it's a bit of fun, um, rather than taking it too seriously, um, and it's helping out people in, in these difficult times as, as uh, using as a sanitizer. So you can, you can use it as a sanitizer, so if you, yeah. would, if you would like to do, but maybe leave a little drop so you can taste it. Yeah. Because this is um, this is the the sanitizer is where the whiskey begins, if you like. So it's, it comes off the still, and then we add a bit of water to reduce it to to sixty three and a half percent, and then it goes into the into the barrels. But at that high strength, it it kills all the bugs. So you can rub it on your hands, and it will it will kill the bugs. But also. Um, we haven't changed it at all, you know. So this this is what goes into our casks. So it's serving two purposes. You get a an extra, not a dram because it's zero years old, no. but an extra. But so. I think it's quite fun to, to taste it because this is how Kilhoman starts its journey. Um, white spirit that then goes into varying casks, and, and you're tasting four different cast types here, uh, and then they really div give the full character to the. To the spirit that's been maturing them over a number of years. Um, I think what I'd like to do is just give you a little update on what's going on here because we're still operating. I mean there's only six of us at, uh, at the distillery now and what we're doing is, is bottling and, and sending orders 
out around the world, and which is very important for us. So only six of us, James and myself, and Isla Heads, and uh, Michal Besser, and, and uh, Derek and Scott, are here uh, helping out um, in these difficult times. It is important for us to, to keep uh, orders trickling out um, because uh, there are people still buying and uh, online sales are certainly still the, the main and only channel for, for, um, for us to sell our, our whiskey. And, and at the moment it's, it's pretty buoyant and, and we're making sure that we get supplies to the various online operators around the world. So apart from that, obviously it's quite busy on the farm here. Uh, lambing started last week and, and also calving. Um, I'd like to say I know all about that side of it, but um, I don't. But luckily I've got people who do. Uh, and we've also been ploughing the fields and, and we hope to be able to sow the barley, uh, 100 acres, uh, 90 acres of concerto uh, and 10 acres of Diablo this year. And the experimental uh, barley variety is all about um, seeing how that uh, performs through uh, the dis distillation process and, and certainly there is, uh, there is a distinct difference at, at that stage of the stills. Um, so it's something we enjoy doing. Uh, we've had some very dry weather fortunately in the last two to three weeks and it's allowed us to plough the fields and, and we're now just about ready to, to sow and uh, unfortunately I think on Sunday that the weather isn't going to be very kind to us so we're just seeing if we're going to go and do the, the sowing tomorrow. But apart from that uh, things go on, the farm is still operating uh, and they're flat out um, doing all the lambing and the calving and, and also uh, looking after the barley uh, for us. Because obviously people who maybe aren't so familiar with Kilhoman, you know, we are a, a farm distillery, you know, the, the first one we're going to taste, the 100% the island, this is kind of what you saw as, you know, the unique element to that would set Kilhoman apart from other distilleries, you know, when you, when you started the distillery, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I always felt that it was important to have a point of difference when we set up Kilhoman. Uh, you know, over 100 distilleries in Scotland, and, and at the time that we started, there were seven working distilleries on Isla. Uh, and I felt that we needed a point of difference, a uniqueness to set us apart. And that's why we, we built on a working farm, because that's how distilling uh, started in Scotland, but also uh, it was true of Isla as well. There were four small farm distilleries dotted around all over Isla, uh, and there were 35 registered ones uh, back at the turn of the 1900s. So it was important for us to do that. Unfortunately, we chose a location where we could grow very good uh, malting barley. Uh, and that although Isla does have some tricky weather conditions, uh, we've still every year we've managed to to uh, produce a harvest and produce whiskey from it. Uh, and we're very proud of, of that. Uh, and so barley to bottle is something that, that Kilhoman is, uh, is unique for, uh, and it's our flagship expression. Yeah. I mean, other people are, they're using locally grown barley and, and things like that, aren't they? So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Brewer Gladdy grow a lot of barley on Isla for, for, for their own use. Uh, and I think in total, uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, it, you know, last year it was sort of 12, 1400 tonnes of barley that were grown. Uh, we grow a maximum of about 260, 260 t uh, 70 tonnes here for our own use. We don't uh, sell any of that. We use it all here uh, for our own uh, production. Uh, and Brewer Gladdy buy from a lot of farmers on Isla. And actually, it's great that uh, they support uh, the local community and the lo local farmers. So they have another income stream from growing barley for the distillery. But we're the only people that do it. Yeah, I mean, I think With we're the. Yeah, I, I think we, you know, we like to brag about what we do um, uh, and we're the only one that actually grows it, malts it, um, distills it, matures it uh, and bottles it on site. So you know we're, we're proud of the fact that we can do that and I think in today's world which is hugely competitive out there with single malt and whiskies from all around the world that you have to have a point of difference that st you stand out from the crowd from and, and we've got that and, and that's what we're very proud of. So this, this first so the order we're going to taste these in uh, today is the 100% the Isla Bourbon Barrel and then the, the Fino Cask, uh, the Loch Gorm and then the Amburg. Okay, so I mean you don't need, we've got four glasses here because, you know, if you have four glasses, absolutely brilliant. If you don't, no problem, you know, we might be going quite a bit quicker than you uh, want to drink the whiskies, but maybe you could have a spare glass and you can you can nose it in one and pour it out or something like that but it's it's good to to kind of compare back um so yeah that'll be the order um and this is a the 100 percent isla is 
the name alludes to the, the whole the fact the whole process is done yeah. here. Yes, and, uh, and that's why we called it 100% Isla. Uh, and this is from a cask uh, early in 2011. Uh, this is at full strength, so a bourbon barrel. I think this was a refill uh, bourbon barrel, uh, if I'm right. Uh, but it's a lovely <laughs> colour. Uh, all our um, malt used for 100% for Isla and, and through the process. It is a lighter, fresher, more vibrant character of, of spirit. Uh, and the Port Ellen uh, spirit, uh, by all the malt uh, from Port Ellen maltings, tends to be a little bit creamier uh, and a little bit sort of heavy, if you like, uh, but creamy and fresh. This just has a vibrancy and freshness to it. It's more lightly peated, uh, and therefore that transfers that lightness and fruitiness and, and floral character into the, to, to the spirit and then the whiskey that's uh, eventually maturing. Uh, and I think we, we do, as I've said before in these broadcasts, that we use some very good quality casts and bourbon barrels from, from Buffalo Trace in Kentucky. And I think that gives you consistency of quality uh, and something that we like to, to fill mainly into first fill because we get all that big hit of fruit and, uh, and freshness uh, straight off. And for a young distillery who's, who's looking to release relatively young single malts, that's important to us. But we do refill them once more. So. When he knows this, it's just sort of grassy and fresh and, and fruity. Very, very herbaceous. Yeah, herbaceous. Herbaceous. Can you spell that? No, no. actually, if I can't. Uh, <laughs> but that's probably a reflection of yeah. you as much yeah, as probably. me. Yeah. I mean, so even at 55.3%, uh, it doesn't have an a, a alcohol prickle or, or burn. Uh, it's, it's very approachable and very round. And, and at, at between 10 and 20 parts per million of phenol, so very lightly uh, peated, uh, it stands out from, from the rest of our uh, releases in terms of the peating level and the sort of depth of character. And I think we're, we're, we're delighted that that's the case. So this stands out. We fill mainly into bourbon for our 100% our, um, Isla. We have filled uh, sherry, but we've, we just think it works incredibly well with bourbon casts. And we've stuck with that. We have done a release using a bit of sherry and, and people were, were, were rather sort of... Um, I think they were disappointed that we were using sherry. They thought that we used Not all, all, of them, but all yeah. sherry. I mean, I think that it's important to, to mix it up a bit. We don't use it for experimental casts because we don't, we don't have a huge amount of it. Um, we're now, we've increased the size of our, our malt floor. So we've doubled from two ton batches to four ton batches. We're much more efficient at that process now. So the drying process, which is the key to make sure that you, you dry all your barley down uniformly across the whole bed is important. I think in the past we may not have done that and therefore you're putting um, uh, malt through the system and into through the mill, which you're just squashing the grains rather than crushing them and, and that's really no good at all. So now we're much more efficient, we're getting better yields off it uh, and it's working a lot better. So we reckon it's between 20 and 25% of our production uh, that we uh, produce from our own barley and we'd like to keep it at that level going forward. And um, you mentioned the varieties that we um, are sowing this year, um, in the next day or two. Can you remember what varieties we grew in 2011? I think so. I think it was publican in those days. Um, Are you making that up? No, nope, I'm not making that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was I think publican. It, yeah, it was publican. We grew publican for a, for a while, we didn't we? We grew that for about three or four years. I think it's all about um, what the seed merchants are looking at and they're always um, coming up with new varieties that are probably more resistant to disease and, and work better in certain climates and publican work well here for us uh, and then along came concerto and, and we've gone with concerto and concerto has been a very consistent performer for us over the last say five or six years uh, and in the last four years we've just grown a, a different variety uh, as a sort of experimental type so 10, 10 acres of I think we did Laureate to start with. Um, last year we did Sassy uh, and uh, we're doing Diablio. This year there's one other and I can't think of the name at the moment. Um, uh, but it's actually quite fun to do that because when you put it through um, the process and you taste it at the spirit still, uh, sorry, the spirit safe, uh, you do get a different character coming through. And I think um, uh, so there, is, there is a clear difference there between Laureate and, and uh, Concerto and Publican and Diablo. Yeah, I, mean, I think there is a, there's, a, there's a distillery character that comes through on all of them, but there is a little twist on all of them in terms of the character that it's uh, bringing to the fore. And so you, do you select, um, you know, we've, we've grown Concerto pretty consistently now for, I don't know, three or four years, maybe yeah. more. 
um, is that because of how it performs in the field or how it transfers into the spirit? I think it's 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 way it performs in the field. I think uh, the way you what you get from it, um, and I think that's key. Um, but I think concerto probably will be um, replaced at some time in the future. But at the moment, it's performing very well, and uh, we'll stick with it because we, we have a uh, very good spirit that we provide. And, and I think actually what we harvest is also important, um, and how it harvests. Yeah. Uh, so all those things come together, and, and I think uh, concerto is one of, the, one, of, one of the best performers for us. Uh, I mean, I remember uh, we did Laureate. We grew some Laureate last year. I remember that being very... Two years ago. Two years ago, that, I remember it being very malty. We distilled it yeah. last year. That was yes, it. yeah, we so, said, yes, malty and and uh, and, uh, pff, yeah. and very very different from concertos. That was why I kind of asked because yeah. I thought I was, you know, I, I always associate Kilhoman and particularly our spirit with that real light, Freshness. floral, yeah. fresh uh, mm. notes, and I didn't get that with Laureate. No, no, I think you're right, and and we might have, we we didn't think that Laureate was something that we'd want to repeat um, yeah. because of the style of spirit that we were getting from it. And there's a question about the ABV. So this is 53.3%. The reason why um, we chose this sample, and I guess sort of this range of samples, only one of these whiskies is actually available at the moment, uh, and that's Loch Gorm. Um, the others, these are um, samples from barrels that we will likely use uh, for releases later in the year. So, so this is a, a bourbon barrel that may, I mean, in all likelihood, no. end up in the 100% yeah. Isla release that yeah. will to be available um, later this year. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at the casts we've got now and, and uh, pulling together what we're going to do for the 10th edition of 100% Isla, uh, and uh, this could well be one of the casts we use. Uh, and the style will be very similar once it's released. It will be 100% all bourbon cast matured uh, and a bottle at 50%, and around about 12,000 bottles, uh, and it will be released in September. So you're getting all bourbon this year? Yeah, all bourbon. And we're putting some of our older casts in it. So there will be some 2008. That was the first year uh, that we really were able to, to um, have a, a reasonable quantity of Hubbard Sand Isla. When we first started, I think some of you will remember we had a fire in the kiln about four months after we started production. Uh, that was to do with us drying it down with um, uh, coke, uh, anthracite, and we just got the kiln too hot and. Uh, uh, it caught fire. Uh, so we had a year before we were able to get back up and running. Um, it didn't stop us um, producing from Port Ellenmore, but it stopped us being able to produce uh, any of our own um, production from our own barley. So uh, it's some of our so 2008, 9 and 10 and a, and a splattering of 2011 cars. So the age profile will be around uh, nine years of age. Um, and I, if, I, if you see I'm looking at this phone, it's because um, my brother and, well, my brothers, George and Pete and Catherine, are sort of monitoring the questions and, and feeding them back to me on, on the phone here, because it's obviously only me and Dad. We don't normally sit this close to each other either, but we needed to get in shot. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have questions, uh, post them up. We probably can't answer all of the questions here, but uh, Catherine, George and Pete will, will get back to you um, either on the feed or separately uh, to, to answer those questions. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's one or two here already. Um, this maybe links more to the the uh, sorry the Loch Gorm, which we'll taste later in the in the in the tasting. But uh, the Whiskey Watch was asking about how we handle sulphur casks or sulphur casks. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we don't handle them any differently, really. We we don't seem to have a problem with the sulphur. Um, sometimes you do get that, um, and. Uh, you know, we don't handle them any differently. We, we, we just uh, leave them a bit, bit longer. But sulphur is something that, that does occur in, in um, sherry casts and, uh, and we look after it the best way we can. Okay. And then also uh, Pete and Moore, who's a big Kilhoman fan. Hi, Pete and Moore. Um, please, um, sorry, not please. The first release of red wine cast matured was outstanding. Is there going to be a second release? Yeah, I mean, I think that all the experimental cast releases we've done, we've, they've gone well, uh, some better than others, but I think they've all worked um, and we've repeated them. Uh, I think though what everybody should realise is that the reason we do mature mainly in, in bourbon and, and sherry is because they're consistently good performers uh, and uh, the other cast types 
they do vary from batch to batch, um, and you're always going to get that. So, so uh, you just realize that you're never going to get the same consistency with, with those other cast types as you would do with bourbon and sherry. And, uh, but I think we, we filled more red wine casts, uh, which were similar to the STR, which were X red wine casts, which were shaved, toasted, and recharred. And we'll continue that experiment because it's, it's a great way of, uh, of looking at our, our whiskey in a different format and a different character. And then last question before we move on, sort of jumping back to the 100% the Isla, the first one we, we tried, I Laddie, presumably a fan of our friends down the road, um, where do you get your bourbon barrels from? Yeah, we get those from Buffalo Trace, it's owned by Sazerac uh, out in uh, Kentucky, uh, and we've always um, been able to source our cars from them, uh, and we get the select variety, so they've been aged for three or four years, uh, maybe slightly longer uh, with bourbon and then disgorged and then we bring the cast here and uh, we've always had very good quality we've only ever rejected one or two we've had one or two that leak but that always happens when they travel and, and they get a bit dry uh, so what I believe passionately is that the consistency of your cast that you use is hugely important uh, and you can buy from cooperages here in Scotland there's a very good cooperage Bayside cooperage and yes, you can get very good quality, but the casts come from all different uh, uh, bourbon distilleries, and I think um, the provenance isn't quite the same as being able to buy them all from one distillery. Good, okay, and then, so, um, yeah, time to move on to the next one. Yeah, so, so, so here's, this is a um, cast that we buy, we buy all our sherry casts uh, from Miguel Martin uh, down in the south of Spain uh, and he has some wonderful wonderful casts and we visited him uh, last summer and he has the most amazing operation uh, he's so passionate about what he does uh, he makes sherry but he also makes wine and, and he makes vinegar as well uh, and he has a, an amazing operation and he supplies some of the most uh, amazing casts to the, the scotch whiskey industry um, and uh, we've been able to, to get a, a very good supply from him now we all fill mainly Oloroso sherry casks, that's something that we've always done because they tend to have the, the depth of the character that we're looking for, but then we can get other cast types from it, other sherry uh, casks. And, and this is from Fino casks and, and this is dry casks, the dry sherry, uh, rather than the Manzanier which is extra dry, then you've got Fino, then you've got a Monteado, uh, and then you've got uh, Cream and Petra Jimenez casks. So, and we buy, buy them all, but we've, we experimented with these casts about four or five years ago. Uh, they're butts. Uh, and, you know, when you taste this alongside the Loch Gorm, which is Oloroso Sherry cast, admittedly the Loch Gorm is a little bit older. This is about five years of age. This is, has a sort of nutty, nuttiness to it. And sort of, uh, I mean, I said green apples, but... Uh, th I find it very, um, like, uh, vegetable -y. Yeah, but it's, it's sort of quite like, creamy yeah. and sweet. Um, but again, this is very high strength. This is at 59%. Uh, it has a, a sort of full colour actually. Um, you're expecting something to be similar in, to bourbon maybe, uh, but this has got a much creamier uh, character, 59%. Uh, if you taste this neat, um, it doesn't have burn on, on the back of the palate. But I get sort of a creamy sort of green apple yeah. character coming from it. And actually, you know, you can drink it at this drink, 59%. Luckily, I'm not driving home. Um, and then you can add a few drops of water. And I think that just allows the, the bouquet to just open up a little bit so you can taste behind the alcohol and take away some of that um, alcohol that's sort of uh, not allowing you to taste uh, all that fruit and character uh, behind. And I think this is working incredibly well. And then this is pretty young. Now, I'm not saying that so this, this is the finished article. Um, this, is this, is, this is for four years of age and and so um, this is why I always say age shouldn't always matter um, it's relatively young but I think it's got a character that it's all coming through and and maybe you could say that if you left it for three or four years that you get more depth uh, and you you just sort of um, get a little bit more sort of edginess off it and and that there will be, be full more fullness uh, and less sort of prickle but there's not a lot of prickle there you just you taste a little bit of vibrancy and a bit of youthfulness that you probably want to say, well, let's leave it for a bit longer. But I, I am of the opinion, uh, it's got a few more months before we release it. This is in uh, September, late September. 
uh, and I think it, it, um, it was worth putting out on the market to get people debating about these different cast types that we, we release. And, and I think this is one that everyone's going to be um, uh, delighted with, and it's, I, I believe it's worked incredibly well. And what's the plan? Is it to, to VAT this only as, a, as Fino cast, or are you planning to use some other...? No, no, definitely this is all Fino. This yeah. is going to be all Fino cast matured, uh, and again, it's going to be around about 10,000 bottles, so it's a, a relatively small release. Um, but uh, I think it generates debate um, and argument, and that's what you want. You, you know, if you're releasing all the same stuff all the time, it gets a bit dull uh, and one-dimensional. I think it's important to, to switch it up and, uh, and, and allow people to taste things uh, under different guises. And, and this is where casts really play a major, major part in the character of the whiskey. So a few more questions. Um, why do you water down the new make before barreling? So obviously it comes off the stills at about 70? Uh, yeah, an average of about 70%. Yeah. And then we're watering that down. We're adding water mm. to reduce it to 63 and a half, which was the, you know, the sanitizer, the new make sanitizer. Why do we add that, that water before um, doing the barrel? Well, Jim Swan, who, who obviously uh, was someone that helped me hugely in the early days and, and uh, uh, it's, there's two reasons. Um, I think the industry is always reduced down to 63.5 because there are a lot of swaps going on in the industry between distilleries uh, of, of new make and new spirit, uh, and therefore it's easier to, to do your calculations based on one strength. So 63.5 was always thought the, the right strength to reduce to. Uh, the other thing is that Jim insisted uh, to me that reducing it uh, to 63.5, we could have done it to 64, but 63.5 was about giving it a kickstart, um, getting it to marry and, and, and gel and, and send it on its journey into the warehouse. And, and that was why he persuaded me that, that you should always reduce it to this strength to, uh, before you cask it. Uh, and so we've followed that. We have, we have uh, cast uh, some at uh, full strength, 70%. Um, just to see how that goes, but on the whole, we've we've reduced it to six to three point five. How do they compare the you know the barrel at full strength mm. rather than you know, filling at full strength? Um, I don't think there's a, a huge difference to be yeah. honest. Um, but uh, I would always uh, take Jim's advice in, on these matters, and and so we did. Okay. And also, uh, I'll save the next question for the when we move on to Lock Gorm. But uh, one other one is. Um, have you ever had any cast types that didn't work? Um, I wouldn't say that we've had ones that haven't worked. I think we did buy some rum casts, and, uh, and uh, what um, annoyed me in a way is that, that there was no provenance of the rum, so I didn't know where they'd come from. And I think we're now trying to, to get more provenance from the casts that we buy. Um, the rum uh, is something that, that I mean, nothing happened with these rum casks in the first sort of three years, four years, and you wonder if anything was going to happen. We actually haven't released it, so I'm actually talking rubbish, really, because we haven't actually released the rum. But I think the so You're talking about the rum maturation that's full in the Full maturation rather than, in the We have released one or two single cask rum finishes. We have done rum finishes, uh, and the, we're actually doing one fairly soon, and, and I was tasting them this afternoon, and that has really come on. So it was... Uh, six, seven years in bourbon and, and 18 months in, in rum and suddenly the banana fruitiness and the sort of pineapple character is coming through a lot more than it was. I mean, but, so turn, sorry. I was going to give you my opinion on it. Would, well, would you I like to hear no, it? No, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get well, it. I'm going to get it anyway. Uh, I, re I um, tasting through the cast that we have in the warehouse and also, you know, how I've seen things come together from afar and how you're putting battings together it seems like you know different cast types obviously and and cast types in terms of the the liquid it's been used to mature mm -hmm. in previously and also different cast types in terms of whether they're a fresh cask or a refill cask they behave so differently that it's you either have something that happens very quickly or happens very slowly mm -hmm. and so long as you're um on top of it and tasting those casts to catch at the right moment, yeah. you know, normally it, you'll, you'll get a, a sweet spot somewhere. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And I think it is about patience, but the, the industry is all about patience when it comes to, to your casts in the warehouse and, and leaving them for longer when uh, they, they, don't, they don't perform the way you would want them. But I think the Sauterne, fully matured and Sauterne, yeah, a lot of people liked it, but I thought it didn't have the structure and the, and the, the backbone that I was looking for. And that's just because 
Sauterne is a very sweet um, white wine, and therefore it, you don't believe, or I didn't believe, that you were going to get the structure from that. But we've been quite fortunate because our spirit character tends to lend itself to, to work with all different uh, cast types, and, uh, and we continue the experimentation, and, and, uh, and I enjoy doing it because it, uh, it really sort of um, is fun to go into the warehouse and taste all these different casts as they're uh, maturing. And another question. Um, I'm not sure who, who asked the question that's come from Pete, um, but it's so impressive how, you're, um, how they taste at such a young age, I'm assuming he's talking about our whiskies, compared to other islas. Do you have any particular part of the process you think brings better characteristics to the whisky? I think um, uh, the size of our distillery, and those of you who've visited will, will know that you know, our stills are very small and our mash gun is, is tiny. Uh, and I think uh, if there's anything that plays a part in the character of the, the, um, the spirit and then the, the whiskey that we're, we're producing is the, the size and shape of our stills. I think all parts of the operation play a part, but I think um, we have particularly long fermentation. We like that. It suits our style of, uh, of, of wash. Um, and I think then it, when you're distilling it uh, and our spirit still particularly because the wash still is pretty standard but the spirit still we have a boil bulb and we have tall narrow necks uh, we distill quite slowly there's more surface area contact with the copper uh, and we just you know so if you're distilling quite slowly only the lighter fruitier alcohols will rise up over the line arm and be collected and I think, think that plays a key part in, in, in the character of our new make which is very creamy, very fresh and, and clean, uh, and then putting it into the best quality wood. And, and those two elements, I believe, have allowed us to release relatively young single malts. It's not to suggest one minute that, you know, it's a done deal at four or five, six years of age, um, because we've now got older uh, maturing whiskies of, of 10, 12, 13 and, and 14 year old, uh, and they taste very differently. They're much rounder and softer. But some people are saying they prefer the young vibrancy and the peat and the smoke are all up front in these young casts and young whiskies, uh, and that as they get older they mellow out and, and they lose that sort of Isla characteristic that some people enjoy. So, you know, we enjoy the journey we're going on and, and I think we're fortunate that we've been able to release young whiskies that people have enjoyed and are surprised how, how approachable they are and, and uh, I think we were fortunate at the time that the public uh, were very discerning uh, and and were pre prepared to experiment a lot more than they were in the past. Good. Okay. I've heard that answer a few times. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. You have. I yeah. Was, that's I'm good. Stoked up the fire. I'm stoked up the fire. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, Alex Bruce Simon, is watching. By the way. Oh, Alex Bruce is watching. Yeah. Well, he did. He watch last week because we. Not, I gave him a bit of a, a plug last week, um, <laughs> uh, and I hope he's going to do that in the next uh, couple of weeks when um, uh, he he's on live uh, with. Um, with Arthur Motley, I think. Um, anyway, good. Nice to see you, Alex. Well, I can't see you, but um, nice to you're watching. Uh, and you uh, might learn something. <laughs> Alex, uh, Alex Bruce's uh, MD or yep. of um, yep. Arden American Distilleries. That's yeah, right, yeah. and Adelphi. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, right. So we're moving now from cast strength or cast samples, anyway, to to sort of forty six percent. Yeah. So yeah swill your mouth out or something yeah i just give have a have a bit of a, a slug of water or your new make no actually don't do the new make because that'll blast your palate but yeah, so. the reason for that is sort of i guess we we tasted these ones first even though they're higher strength because they're slightly lighter styles mm -hmm. yeah um, no i think you always taste the younger and and uh the bourbons first and then uh through to to the sort of uh more heavily heavy characteristics coming from sherry and uh, and port and what have you uh, so, the third one we're trying is, is um, the Loch Gorm, the, the, the 2020 release. Um, this has been reduced to 46% and is now out in the market. It hasn't gone to every market because obviously some markets are, you know, finding um, things pretty hard at the moment and, and are, are waiting for things to turn around. And, but we have released it uh, and uh, we've been surprised by uh, the number of people that have, have have bought it and 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 I think we've worked closely with our online partners who, who are certainly seeing some success uh, with customers buying so it's something that we felt it was important not to postpone the release of this uh, and get it out there to as many uh, people as possible and so this is 
I was reading my phone actually. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is this was launched on Monday. It, it's we did we did launch it on our website and we um, it sold out very quickly. All of the the profits from the sale of those bottles um, are being donated uh, to we're not exactly sure what charity, but a charity associated with um, you know everything that's going on at the moment. Um, but it is also available from um, you know wherever you buy your kill home and normally yeah basically. i mean i think it, it will be available it's going to be a bit slower to hit certain markets because um <laughs> we're bottling <laughs> and, and not as quick as uh, the the guys that normally do it but uh, it should be hitting most markets in in this week or next week uh, that have decided to ship uh, and then it'll be a bit slower uh, in other markets uh, because uh, people have decided just not to take it and, and take the risk at this stage um but we're delighted with this um each year we, we add a few older casts uh, to the batting. Uh, this year this will be from 2006, 7, 8, 9 and, and 11. Um, and these are Oloroso Sherry Butts. Um, and I've always believed that uh, Sherry bit Butts are, are the best uh, casts to use. You, you just get a rounder, more balanced uh, uh, maturation. Hogsheads are great, uh, but you get more hard hitting and, and uh, a Sherry influence. Uh, this is for me is, is, is well balanced because I think what we want is not a sherry bomb, something that really sort of smacks you in the head, you know, it's all sherry, uh, but something that allows the, the Kilhoman characteristics to come through. And I think it really does on this. Um, it's lovely, it's fruity, isn't it? It's fruity, it's, it's fresh, but you know that it's from the West Coast and you know that probably it's from Isla because you, you have that sort of salty, ardini, um, brimy style that's coming through on, on the nose and, and especially on the palate. We reduce the 46% because we want to share as many bottles as we can around the world. We don't fill a massive amount of sherry. Um, you know, it's probably about 30% of what we fill uh, with the main, most of it going into bourbon. Um, but we've doubled production recently so it allows us to fill more uh, sherry casks um, because I think it does work very well and we use it in a lot of our releases uh, as something that gives a little bit more colour and depth of character uh, to our Macchia Bay, which is the core expression. 10% um, of that is Oloroso Sherry Cast, uh, and it gives it just that little bit of depth that we are looking for. And so, the, yeah, so if you're not familiar with Loch Gorm, Loch Gorm is um, what we call one of two of our annual releases. So these are all kind of will be 2020 limited editions in one form or another. The 100% Isla or the bourbon barrel that we tasted and, and the Loch Gorm, they, they kind of come around every year, whereas we then have two other releases which are, are special editions. So, um, yeah. There is one or two questions as well about the sherry casts, um, whether these are, are seasoned sherry casts or they're sort of Solera casts, if you like, you know. The seasoned, seasoned sherry casts, yeah. Even the butts, are they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how long in the. Well, in I have the to. Well, I think. Um, yeah, it'll be three or four years or a bit longer in some cases. Um, I think Because you're um, not getting any, I don't get any oak no. from, from these. No, I mean, no. I think um, when you can get your hands on some of the uh, uh, older uh, sherry casks, um, which is more difficult at the moment because just the demand uh, yeah. has, has been uh, great. Um, so you don't tend to be able to get hold of those where, where you have the, the, the oak is absolutely saturated yeah. in sherry. We're not getting as many of those as we used to, uh, but I'm sure that that'll come round uh, in, in the next few years. Um, but I, I was talking to Miguel the other day and, and uh, uh, he was thinking that Spain is in total lockdown. I think most of the, uh, the issues uh, have been further north and although they've been shut for a couple of weeks, um, they're reopening uh, very soon and, and we can get cars shipped from them. Uh, so that's hugely important to us uh, because we're looking to get more cars from him. Yeah. This is a quite a, it's, it's a very different, so to sort of put it in context and in terms of how much the, the cask influences the whiskey, you know, these are both, you know, sherry casks, um, you know, the, the Fino and the, and the Loch Gorm, they're both sherry casks. And so normally you might see on, on a lot of labels, just a distillery saying sherry matured or sherry mm. whatever. Um, but the, 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 the influence on the cask is very, very different. Oh, yeah, I mean, and I think that's why a cask is so important the influence you get from the cast. So a Fino cast and a 
and a, an Oloroso cast, um, you know, just completely different animals uh, and different styles and different characters. And they both worked incredibly well. The, the Loch Gorm and the Oloroso Sherry Bucks are that much older. Um, so we're talking about nine years plus, uh, whereas the Fino cast is, is four years plus. And, and so, you know, it's different ages, but, you know, the Fino is, is becoming, getting to a stage where, you know, it's very good, even at that young age. And there's a few questions about um, getting hold of this in, in the US and in controlled um, liquor states. Uh, the US is the market that I um, work with, and to be totally honest, I'm not exactly sure. It's, hard, it's always hard to know um, the plans of the control states, but we'll certainly uh, do our best to make it available across all the states that we deal with in the US. Um, Good. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think if there are any other questions related to this. Are these first field casts? Or uh, they're main, no, they're, <clears throat> they're, they're first fill mainly. Uh, we did have some that uh, we uh, disgorged and, and re-racked into other casts. They, the casts weren't working as we expected them to, uh, so we've used a few of those, um, but they're mainly first fill casts. Uh, one or two refills, but not, not very many. Um, and there's 15,500, roughly 15,500 bottles that, will, uh, that should be available around the market. And a question from Jordi Ogwed, uh, which Kilhoman whiskey goes best with Coca-Cola? <laughs> None. Ah, Jordi Ogwed. Well, Jordi, is, a, Jordi um, is a friend of James's, uh, and um, uh, well, Jordi, you can drink your <laughs> your Kilhoman with with Coke uh, as long as you're drinking Kilhoman. I don't yeah. care what you do with it. Interesting. I don't know if you'd say that to his face. Um, I'd probably punch him if he poured a <laughs> large dram of Kilhoman and then topped it up with Coke. I think you'd have something else to say. Um, how, do the, um, how does this Loch Gorm compare to, to previous editions? I think, um, funny enough, if you compare fruit it... Fruit forward. <laughs> fruit forward is obviously a word I use quite often. Um, I think this is probably lighter, actually, than last yeah. year's. It uh, doesn't have maybe the depth. We maybe used a, a few refills. I think this is incredibly... Um, approachable. I think this is one of the best we've done. Yeah. Some people prefer a lot more sherry influence. I personally don't. I like the balance between the distillery character and the sherry influence and I think this has got an abundance. I think it's just worked incredibly well. And will it get better if we leave these cars for longer? Uh, they'll change character and they'll probably have more sherry influence. And then some people prefer those because they just enjoy the, the big heavy uh, sherry sweetness and, and I get that. But from my point of view, I prefer just um, just to hold rein back a little bit on that and, and allow the distillery character to shine through. And I think it's working very well on this. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's very yeah. nice. Good. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's excellent. Well yeah. done. Any more? Yeah. Um, yeah. Has the current situation meant it's harder to get casts? I guess we had a big delivery of Buffalo Trace casts, and then we you just mentioned about the. Yeah, no, it hasn't actually. I think the the, the cooperages and the, and the distilleries uh, that we use for getting our casts are still operating, uh, and so uh, we're able to get the casts we, we need. We're not actually in production at the moment, um, but um, when we do get back, we need plenty of casts uh, so that we can we can carry on filling. So, yeah, the, we don't have any problems with our supply chains, uh, with dry goods and, and what have you. Everything is coming into the distillery as we want it. And there might be a few delays. Um, the, the ferry is not working uh, at, to timetable, so you know there are issues there. But uh, we're working around that. And, and as I say, you know what's key for us is is to get orders out the door and continue to be able to do that uh, uh, as long as possible. And as far as production is concerned, we took the right decision to to uh, send the guys home when we did, uh, and um, we will get them back when that. Uh, that it's the right time to do that. And, and as soon as we hope that sooner rather than later. Right, we've got 14 minutes approximately. Okay. So the, the so, last one. On, so the on last the one of our releases, so four releases this year is, is the Amburg. Uh, and uh, all my Scottish friends say I, my pronunciation is You're trying, that's useless. the funny part. Um, yeah, you are trying. <laughs> uh, but I think it's pretty close. Um, yeah. uh, so as I was saying, uh, this was a cock up really to put it bluntly. Um, back in 2014, um, I was away at the time uh, and everyone decided they weren't going to tell me when I was away traveling what had happened. But basically we had Mackie about 46% in one vat and 
Uh, port cast matured at 50% in the other vat, and yeah, just someone opened the wrong valve, so they, they mixed together. So, uh, so I these was, are two tanks yeah, two that we use. Tanks. So we combine casts for Loch Gorm in, in these tanks and Maca Bay and everything else. Yeah. Mix and mix with other. yeah. So they, they mixed together, uh, and actually, Cathy picked me up from the airport and she told me on the way back to the distillery what had happened uh, a week before. Um, of course, I wasn't very happy about that. But actually, all good things come out of a mistake like this, and as long as you've got the patience. So we took the, took the mixture out um, and put it in bourbon barrels, mm -hmm. refilled bourbon barrels, and, and just forgot about it, put it in the warehouse. And that was in 2014. And, and so these car, so the whiskey is probably nine years of age, really. Um, 2014? Uh, so, uh, no, no, you put it... What? No, yeah. Oh, so you put yeah, it back yeah, into yeah. the cast of yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm just trying. So, so it so would it have been was... four or five years of age prior to that. So it, yeah. it had some age on it. So we just allowed it to 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 um, to combine and, and sort of come to some sort of structure, and, and 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 it did it did happen. And so last year we looked at them again and thought, you know, this is actually something that we could release. Um, so we we put it together. Uh, it's around about ten ten and a half thousand bottles. It has a quite a sort of reddish sort of tinge to it is it uh, more which is the port casts um, that have given it that tinge and to me it has this sort of summer fruits freshness mm -hmm. to it um, the strength we are reducing this to 46 because it was would have been uh, cast strength it would, well no out of the vats when it, we combined it, it was about 47 48 uh, and so reducing it by a couple of percent wasn't really doing it any harm uh, and uh, we're releasing it at the end of um, well, the beginning of may and uh, Again, I think it's worked really well. Something that was a complete cock up at the time uh, has come together. And, and I think uh, if you allow everything and have a bit of patience and allow things to work, you know, you can get, make some good out of something that you were actually holding your head in your hands and wondering what we're going to do. So, you know, this is a, a, the name's a bit of fun, really, um, uh, but it, it has worked. And as I say, I think it's beginning of May. Uh, we will be releasing this uh, around the world. Um, to all our customers. It's quite interesting because I think what you can see across the, the sort of the four whiskies we tasted is it's kind of cast samples if you like you know the the ingredients that you will select to then put together something that's hmm. maybe got a little bit more um, balance between the elements within it so these are kind of you know with the the bourbon barrel there's obviously a lot of freshness um, there with the I found the, the Finos still had some, some sort of rough edges to, to knock off, and maybe that can happen in the vattings, but these two are, are very much the finished article. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. I think the Loch Gorm and, and the Amburic is, is uh, something that's come together really well and, and are mellow and soft, and, and you can argue that the Fino maybe has a little bit of sort of harshness on the back of the palate, but it's still got a huge amount of character. And, and, and is I'm, that something, that sort of harshness, is that something that you're trying to sort of you won't try and mask that no, at all. You'll try and bring that through no, almost. No, yeah, I won't mask it. I think, you know, we'll reduce this to 50% uh, and, uh, and bottle it at that strength. And I think there's something about it that I like. Uh, and uh, you can argue it needs a, f a few more years, but I think it's, uh, it's fun to put these sorts of things out and get debate going uh, amongst a very discerning uh, public who, who enjoy following Kilhoman. There's a lot of questions about um, what does Amburak I tried to say it there as well. I can't. What does so it mean? what does what does it mean? Yeah, cock up. It means a cock up. A mess. A mess. A mess. Yeah, yeah. A burrach is yeah, a, a burrach is, is a mess, mess yeah. and, and people use it a lot uh, here on Isla. You know, we have burrach. You know, it's a, it's made a it's made yeah. it's a mess. Because originally, um, I, I, I don't know if Jamie, the guy, you know, Jamie bottling hall Jamie, who accidentally yeah. turned. Yeah. The, Whatever. I mean, you, we'll you, be sending him a bottle. Yeah, I was going to say we can get a hold of his address. You weren't, uh, you weren't, he wasn't top of your Christmas card list at the time, but maybe no, he is well, now. Nor a lot of people actually. <laughs> but look, it's worked out, and uh, uh, you know, it, it's come together really well. And I think um, uh, we'll enjoy people's comments um, uh, when they when they get a bottle and try it. And also, you know, if um, these are obviously well, the Amburic is a is a preview, you know, so it, it's quite unusual that we would send out samples like this uh, to people in advance of a launch. So um, this isn't the, the finished, finished article, but it, it's very close. And, um, you know, so if you're, if you're tasting this and if just in the tastings in general, please do share your photos and your um, experiences, your thoughts, your own tasting notes on these, um, these whiskies. Hashtag us, um, hashtag Gilhomen or, or tag us in the posts. Uh, we'd love to hear your, 
your thoughts? Um, so I think, you know, it's been a fun tasting and, and I'm glad some of you have been able to, to get your samples out and, and taste along with us. Um, you know, I always uh, say that cask it plays a massive role and I, I don't think anybody can argue with that. Uh, and this is, demonstrates that uh, very clearly um, from the same spirit, apart from the 100% Isla, these three are all from the same spirit, but the cask uh, has a massive influence on the, the end product. And um, we have had a lot of questions about the fish and, and yeah. you know, the cancelled Isla Festival. We do have plans, yeah. don't we? we yeah, don't no, we, we, we've um, put together a, um, a fish release, um, which a cancelled fish release, which we, we, we'd like to make available at the beginning of May. Is wow, that we're not no? sure. Uh, we're we're going to announce sure. plans pretty We're going to announce plans, so <laughs> uh, watch this spot. But I think we're going to... We're we will have something a bottling, yeah. We're going to have a... Uh, it's going to be a special bottling. Um, for those and, and more bottles because I think um, that's only fair uh, as well. So we're working on that at the moment and, uh, and I'm not allowed to tell you more than that apparently. Well, um, we don't really know the plans. We, no. I mean, we've obviously sort of got we, a, a... Yeah, know, we've got an, an idea plan. in our, in our minds and, and then we'll we'll announce it and, and release all that on our social media channels uh, so that everybody knows what we're doing. But I think it's important for us to do that uh, and um, uh, we'll, we'll let you know what, what, we're, what we're planning. And obviously, um, I mentioned that we'll have more packs available. They will be, well, we're packing them up just now. So um, they will go through to, we'll hopefully finish them early next week. They'll go through to Glasgow where our, our sort of shipping partner, if you like, um, sends them on. So I would imagine come Wednesday, we will be able to, to make them available. I'm not promising that, uh, but... If you keep an eye on our, our social media channels, as I say, we, we will let you know in advance of, of the new packs being available because I think a lot of people missed out last time and we will likely make them, make it available to purchase more than one per person. So um, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's been very popular and I think there, are, uh, there should be plenty to go around next time. Okay. Good, okay, well look, it's been great fun being able to present to you again. It's coming a, a weekly occurrence. Uh, we're enjoying doing this uh, and to be able to engage with everyone around the world is, is fantastic. Um, so keep watching and keep tuning in and, and we look forward to seeing you again next Friday. Okay, cheerio, bye-bye, have a good nice. evening.